Andrew with Trans Portal CFB here. Look, we're excited to announce that we've partnered with Run Your Pool to bring you a weekly free college football pick and pool. You think you have what it takes to beat our team of experts? Here's your chance. How do you play? The sign up is completely free and easy. The link to the pool is in the description of each video on our YouTube channel and our podcast on Spotify and Apple. Click the link, create a new account, join the pool, click make picks, then hit make your picks on the left. Make your straight up picks for 10 of the week's biggest games. Once you're done, save them on the bottom. Run Your Pool is the home of competition, bringing sports fans and their social circles together to compete, connect, and make every game matter more. Three winners will get Fanatics gift cards, $150 for first place, $100 for second, $50 for third. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to our pool and make your picks today. Now, enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome back to the Transfer Portal Gambling Show. This is episode three. We're on week one now. Week zero is coming gone. Not a great showing for us, but I'm joined by Andrew, Andrew, and Matt. Guys, how are we doing? Sad. Yeah. Um, that was a bit of that. It was rough. It was a rough week zero for me. I went two and four. Um, Got to be better. I mean, that Nebraska game kind of killed me because Nebraska's on my no bet list and I hate them forever. Uh, I mean, week zero, the games were all right. Um, at least I got to see one of my bets went easy with FAU. Uh, but, yeah, two and four. I'll be better this week. I got a ton of plays coming. Uh, but, yeah, I'm excited for week one. We'll actually get good teams to play football. Yeah, uh, screw Gene Chizik. <laughs> and, and the defense that you fielded, I, I hope you all stubbed your toe against App State. It, it was not a fun I, night for me. I, I am happy. I am happy that we actually get somewhat of a respectable slate this week. And because, as you saw, I did not place a single bet for last week. Um, I'm kind of glad I didn't because I looked at everything and there was really only like one or two plays I would have looked at and been like, yeah, that's probably doable. I probably should have bet Florida A&M uh, on the point spread, kind of kicking myself for not doing that. But uh, listen, we got a real slate this week. I'm excited about it. It all starts on Thursday. Uh, this is honestly the first, as far as I'm concerned, the first real week of the season. Matt, I believe you had, a, you had some words for the public that you wanted to put out there. Uh, in addition to Dave's public apology, I would like to apologize for going one and four. I started out good at least because I had I had Northwestern spread, so I started out good. And, and but I also predicted them to go well under uh, fifty one, and they cleared that in the, like the middle of the third quarter. So, and then I would like to publicly put Hawaii on my no bet list. Oh, God. They did what I thought they would. They, I, I said uh, they're going to come out and they're going to score, and I don't know that Vanderbilt would be able to keep up, but apparently they fielded the worst defense this side of – well, they're on this side of everything. They're as far west as it goes. But they fielded the worst defense I've ever seen, um, and they allowed 63 points to a Vanderbilt team that had no business scoring over 20. That was absolutely unbelievable. They could not st- – Vanderbilt was moving at will. I mean, that's something – Oh, I think Hawaii was up – was that 10 nothing, or was like – it was it – was it, no, it was 7 nothing. Yeah, and then early – yeah, they gotten two, three and outs, and then they uh, Vandy finally scored a touchdown, and they fumbled on the first play. Yep, and then the game was over, and uh, my seal was, my, my fate was sealed. Uh, I also tailed you on Utah State, and as a that wasn't an official play for me, but I tailed it, and that didn't work out either. But uh, we're back. All right, week one, we got a lot of games on the slate. I'm very excited. Let's start off our week. I'm gonna start off hot. I'm gonna start off with, I'm taking. In the West Virginia pick game, backyard brawl, I'm taking West Virginia with the touchdown dogs. I love JT Daniels. Uh, I love JT Daniels reuniting with Graham Harrell. I just think that Daniels is a better quarterback than Slovis. Them playing against each other is kind of awesome, especially in this kind of rivalry game. I, I just I just like West Virginia. I, I think Pitt's going to win, but I think I'll take the touchdown. You can get a touch seven and a half somewhere. Um, I think I took a touchdown, so – what do you guys think about West Virginia Pitt? I fade uh, here. I I have I have Pitt minus seven and a half. I feel like Pitt's loss of production is just a bit overstated. So obviously, yes, they lose Addison, they lose Pickett, and those are both huge losses. But they bring back pretty much everything else. They bring back all their defense, their top three running backs, and all of their starting O line from last year. 
And then they bring in – they have their, their number two receiver from last year, and then they bring in Kanata Mumpfield out of Akron, who has had, eight, I think, 850 yards as a true freshman last year. So he has some good potential. And I, I just think as a whole, this, this, the Pitt team is much better than the West Virginia team. I agree Daniels is probably better than Slovis, but I think, I think the rest of the team is going to pull this out. My thing is, I just think from based on what I've read, I just think West Virginia is going to have among the youngest defenses in the Big 12 this season. So there's going to be a lot of inexperience for the uh, for the Hilltoppers, this, uh, Mountaineers, I'm sorry. I get all these Hicks states mixed up. But I just, you know, I just don't see enough with West Virginia uh, to, to keep up with Pitt. Uh, seven and a half is a bit of a scary line for me. I see it more like a 10 point win for Pitt. I know Pitt had among the best run defenses in the country last year. And I know that they bring back a lot of the front seven from last season. There's just really no reason for me to truly believe that West Virginia is going to keep up. And with the game in Pitt as well, I, I just can't really see why I can really lean towards the Mountaineers or thinking that they're going to cover. Yeah, yeah. Speak, speaking to that loss of production for West Virginia, they lose their top running back of last year, their top wide receiver from last year, and their top six tacklers on defense. So they, they lose a, a ton of production from last year on both sides of the ball. I'm still sticking with West Virginia. I don't care about these these people lo- leaving and coming back. It's first this time he's trying to talk his bed into existence. It's years. Sorry, too late for him. They're going to be amped up. JT Daniels is going to have an a- absolute game. Um, I think I'm the only one to play in this next game, Central Michigan, Oklahoma State. This is just me being matched and biased, and I just think Central Michigan is such a good team. I think three touchdowns is a lot. Uh, Oklahoma State will win. I don't think they'll be an upset alert, but I think Central Michigan covers the 21. I've been talking about them all year. I think Dan Richardson is a very, very solid quarterback. Lou Nichols is one of the best running backs in the country, in my opinion, playing for Central Michigan. Um, Oklahoma State loses some production on defense. They have a very solid defense, but I just think they lose too many guys. Um, and I just think Central Michigan will – it'll be it'll be close in the fourth quarter. Oklahoma State will pull away, but I don't think they'll cover the uh, the three touchdowns. I don't think the you guys – The thing with Oklahoma State is not just the amount of – the amount of players that they lose on defense. It's the fact that Jim Knowles is now at Ohio State too. So you don't lose – so you lose that defensive mastermind, their, their key component from last year. I respect it. I really do. Uh, that line's actually gone down a little bit to 22 now. So clearly Vegas is starting to get a lot of bets in favor of Oklahoma State. So I think a lot of – so I think they're trying to get people to move over to that central Michigan side now. Uh, I respect it. It's it, I, it was a game that I truly thought about, maybe for like an Oklahoma State first half, maybe like at a minus 10 or something like that. But there's just way too many questions on that Oklahoma State defense and how it's going to look this year. They usually put up great defenses in the Big 12, but I, 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 still, I still can't touch it in, in my honest opinion right now. Yeah, I'm on that loot train. I'll take Central Michigan plus 21. Before we get to, in my opinion, the game of Thursday, I'm going to give a really quick pick that I saw. Uh, shout out Cook the Book on Instagram. Uh, Tennessee minus nine and a half in the first quarter. They're, they were 10 and two last year in the first quarter. Ball State, uh, they lost a ton of production on defense. Again, with the Mac, the Mac games, Mac action, I. Uh, I, I don't believe in Ball State. I think Ball State will cover the 35 because that's a ridiculous spread. But first quarter spread, I think Tennessee jumps out to a 14 nothing, 21 nothing lead in the first quarter. Um, and that's my play. So now to get to the game of the evening, obviously I'm biased. Penn State-Purdue, I know we got differing opinions here. Who wants to start that one off? Uh, I'll go ahead and just do that. I know Penn State lost among the most talent in terms of defense in the Big Ten. That was my big reason for this. You know, uh, you know, this is the essentially almost the same Purdue offense that played in that Music City Bowl when you consider like, hey, David Bell was not on the Purdue team for that game. Milton Wright was not on that Purdue team for that game either. But you still get a really good wide receiver, Brock Thompson, who got over 200 yards in that game. You still get Payne Durham, who could be among the best tight ends in the Big Ten this year. I really like this Purdue offense a lot. This is in Ross Aid, uh, you know, I, I'm going to say a point that I know you're not going to disagree with me on this, Dave, but I do not trust James Franklin when the game is this high of a stake right now. This is a game that Penn State absolutely needs to win in order to give themselves even a chance to win the Big Ten East, which I think even that's a bit of a reach. But uh, I still like Purdue a lot this year. My main concern with Purdue is how is their defense going to play? Because that was the, the, the broken spine for them last season. That's why they couldn't get over the hump of Wisconsin or even, you know, Iowa. So 
well, they did beat Iowa, but it, they didn't. It didn't last enough to 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 get them into Indy. But I still like Purdue a lot as a team. I obviously like Aiden O'Connell a lot, and I just think that this is the year that Purdue takes that step forward. That line has actually for Purdue money lines gone from plus one forty two down to plus one thirty eight. So it's starting to favor Penn State a little bit more, losing some favorability with the Boilermakers. I just like Purdue a lot. The plus one forty two, it just seems like a good way to, to start off the Big Ten season. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of a from my heart pick, but I I I, th- I think they're three and a half right now. I'm taking the Penn State money line. I want to lay the wood. I think it's a one seventy right now. I laid that. Um, so here's the thing uh, when it comes to me. Yeah, Penn State lost production on defense. They're still going to have one of the best defenses in the Big Ten. You said brought up bringing the Big Ten East. In my opinion, that's out of the realm of possibility. Starting the season off right and beating Purdue, going to Purdue and winning is very possible. I know Franklin, I'll sh- shit talk Franklin. I'll, I, he's, I don't think he's a good coach. But I think that going into the season last year, when they went into Wisconsin and beat Wisconsin, that was more of a shock than this would be if Penn State beat Purdue. Because Penn State's a three-and-a-half-point favorite right now on the road. Everybody and their mother is on Purdue from what, I, what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, because Purdue – I think last year that's the best Purdue will get. I, I don't think they can – you can tell me Aiden O'Connell was great. Aiden O'Connell was one of the best uh, quarterbacks in the in the Big Ten. They ran a three-quarterback set a lot last year. They didn't really they didn't really trust O'Connell. And to me, I know he's the guy this year, but I just – and obviously I have Sean Clifford. But Clifford, I think – I'm hoping this year is going to be more of a game manager. They just need to run the football and – yeah, like I said, like we said before, they lost guys on defense, but Manny Diaz, that's the defensive mastermind they needed. He's going to create a stout Penn State defense. It's going to be a low-scoring game. Um, I think Penn State – I don't know if they'll cover the three-and-a-half. That's why I'm taking the money line. It's going to be a close game. I'm going to be, like, borderline crying during it. Uh, but, yeah, I'm taking the Penn State money line. Call it bias. Say I'm being wishful, but I think that uh, they'll pull it off. Is Aiden O'Connell going to fumble twice on the goal line? Yeah, probably. I mean, he's he's going to turn the ball over. He always does. And so will Clifford. That's just the kind of game it's going to be. Uh, I think that's it, guys, right, for Thursday games? That's all we had? Yeah, I believe so. All righty. And then moving on to Friday. The Friday slate, not in love with. No. Uh, Scott, I mean, there's. I feel like there's two games that we're all on. So let's start off with Michigan State, Western Michigan. If anyone wants to uh, talk about that. All right, then I will. Um, I uh, again another Mac a Mac team that I'm. I talked about Western Michigan lost a ton of production last year. They lost LB, they lost Sky Moore, they lost a lot of their best players, and they were supposed to win. They were the, they were favorites to win the Mac last year, and they wind up going. I think it was either eight and four and seven and five, and they finished in last place in the uh, division due to their conference record. Uh, they beat Pitt last year, yes, but Michigan this Michigan State team. I like I like Peyton Thorne. I I just think that there are twenty two. I would prefer it be twenty one. I might buy it down, but I I took the twenty. I, I think twenty two is fine. I think they win by four touchdowns. I think they win by twenty eight. I just don't think Western Michigan. They don't really have anybody that moves the needle for me, and I don't think they can score at will like people thought they were going to do last year. They did it early on, but they just nothing moves me about the Western Michigan team. And I think Michigan State's going to blow them out. I've seen a lot of uh, previews for the MAC that list Western Michigan as the team to finish last in the conference. Yeah, that's what I – I was one of those people that picked them to finish last in the conference, or at least bottom two. Uh, Akron's going to finish last in the conference, but, uh, yeah. Did we um, – let's see. Let's go to the slate. Temple Duke, I'm not even going to watch a second of. Illinois, Indiana, not touching. TCU, Colorado, thoughts? Can I actually touch on that uh, Illinois Indiana game? Yeah, I don't. I don't have a play on that. I just don't know how on earth Illinois is a dog in that. I think that's yeah. Vegas trying to bait people. If you watch college football, you know Illinois is the better team. You know they got a better defense, significant better, better running offense. back. Uh, by a freaking mile, Chase Brown is yeah. better than any player on Indiana. I don't know how Illinois three point dogs going into Indy. That, that's got to be some sort of Vegas, like, hey, we're, we're going to try and bait you into taking You asked me who Indiana's anyway. quarterback this year. I don't even know who it is, to be that's honest. Like the Missouri transfer. Yeah. Well, I'm, well, and then I'm DeVito starting for Illinois from Syracuse. It's just yeah. two very not good quarterbacks. I mean, that could be a play where 
I might. I mean, obviously, I, it could. Illinois could be a sucker's bet. You don't know. Um, is there a total on that game? It's there three. is obviously. Oh, the total. No, the total. Uh, let's you find out. Check around. 45, 45? 40, 45. 45. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. The thing is, I still kind of like that under. I mean, I like the Illinois quarterbacks are not going to throw for over 250. This game is poison. Sure. Any which way, I feel like. I don't think that's. Yeah. Like, I could see Illinois running it down Indiana's throat, Indiana not being able to get a successful offense, and Illinois wins 24 to 7. Yeah, I, I want to take one. I'm uh, not an official play, but I want to lean Illinois. We'll see. I might or, take Illinois first half, to be honest with you. That might be the smart play to go. First half money line, I guess. Or I can check well, the team total what, under for Indy. It's probably going to be like yeah. 13. Well, why no, you, why you look 13. that up? Uh, anyone have thoughts on TCU Colorado? Uh, TCU is – I don't. You could put up a five quarterback system for TCU. I would still take TCU. To I think TCU is better than Colorado. Like we talk, we've talked about on our shows. If anyone has watched those shows, we all love TCU and we all hate Colorado. Colorado, Andrew Stewart, you despise. You think it can be one of the worst I, I want the entire state of Colorado to just know you <laughs> suck at football, except yeah. for the Colorado School of Mines. You're awesome. Shout out. Is that that's Austin Eckler, right? Uh, no. No. He suffered whatever. Somebody went there. Bill Quincy? That might be it. But uh I, I just I, I'm on TCU with the 14. Um I just think they're gonna smoke Colorado. This will it's a, I mean it's a game that I'm gonna fucking put on and fall asleep to. Uh yeah, that the Friday slate is kind of poopy, but I mean I'm on Michigan State and uh TCU. So now into the day of the week, Saturday. That was a wild choice for their primetime game of Friday. TC in yeah. color. Just, well, that's a 10 o'clock game. The primetime game is actually – yeah, so Michigan State's on at 7 on ESPN. And then you got, like, nothing. I guess it goes into Illinois, Indiana on FS1. I'm going to watch all these games except it, – uh, It's time for me, buddy. Yeah, all for you. I apologize. East Coast. <laughs> I'm going to be falling asleep to it. That so, wild, just to, just to give you guys a bit of a heads up. A Illinois first half money line would be approximately plus one twenty. That is uh, that honestly feels like a steal. I don't hate that actually. Vegas is trying to bait us, man. That scares me so much because yeah, Illinois we're totally going to be better team. We're totally going to wind up taking Illinois, and then or at least I am, and then no, screw it. Add Illinois money line to my card. Yeah, I agree. First that's, half or the whole. That's game. an official play from us. Illinois money Ooh. line. You know what? Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go game. I'm gonna go the game. I don't like taking first halves. I'm I'll go with you. I'll go with you. All right. I'm going first half. Add that to the yeah. card. Illinois money line. All right. Let's move on to Saturday. There's no point totals here, man. What the hell? Yeah, it's all. It's early still. This is coming yeah. out Wednesday, right? Yeah. I I, I hate the early stuff, man. Colorado State. Oh, from- hang on, hang on, hang on. Andrew Star, oh. I got it right here. Uh, <laughs> Indiana Hoosiers total point total for this game is at approximately 24. You want to go over 24, that's minus 106. Wait, 24? 24? Yes. 24 as, as, in two, as, as in Kobe's second number. As yeah. in 24, okay? Yeah. And as someone who just came from As Mexico, in add that to my card. Under? Yeah. Under. Yeah, if you do the math. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, okay, yeah, that's right. I had it right. I add that to my card. That's official. That's two no. official from Andrew Yep, two uh, just – Auto reaction plays. We'll see how that goes out for me. Saturday. All right. Are we good to go on Saturday now? We still, we still. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. I love how none of us came in with anything like, like, oh, we're not going to touch Illinois, Indiana. Now I'm just in love with this Illinois play. And it's going to be a cry. If, if Vegas baits me, you know what? I'll shake their hand. Good, good for them. <laughs> I just want to shake your hand. Vegas can have more. <laughs> All right. Colorado State, Michigan. Thoughts? I believe I, I, have, the, I, love I have the over here. What's that number at? Sixty-one and a half. It's a Six. lot of points. That's a lot of points. Point. But I both teams lose a ton off their defense. So the Colorado State defense, which wasn't good last year, returns only five starters. They lose both starting okay. corners and both their DBs. Michigan State obviously loses Aiden Hutchinson and lose production in other places, and then. Michigan, what uh, what was a top 15 offense in the country last year, only lost Hassan Haskins, really. And they get back uh, Ronnie Bell, from, who was injured in the first game last year and didn't play one of their better receivers. So they get back a ton of, a ton of their offense. 
Then meanwhile, the Rams are switching over to what is more likely more of an air raid attack versus the pounding ground they had last year under Matt Mum. So I just think this is a place where they're going to put up points more than is expected of them. And I just think they're going to, they're going to be able to get to 61 and a half. I do think Michigan is going to crush the Colorado state, but I think they might be able to put up 17 and Michigan state puts up 45 and we're out of there. Okay. So that's right. The number that's 62, right? Yeah. So, I mean, if the totals at, let's say 62, 31, do that math. You're a math guy, right? What are they expecting the score going to be? Uh, they said it's Probably right at like that, 49 right? 49 to 47. Be, 45, 17 would be the expected spread. No, 42, 420. No, 47. That would be 45 to 15. That's approximately what they'd be expecting. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, so I, I like the play. I just don't know if Colorado State's going to 17. I guess 17 points is reasonable. And then they're running their King, Michigan's running their King Solomon offense with two quarterbacks, which never, ever works. But in this case, it will because you could put me in a quarterback. You could probably, I could hand the ball off and score, we score some points against Colorado State. But yeah, I mean, how do we feel about a Michigan minus 18 first half? This just feels like the type of yeah, game that's a good that I, I do like that. That that is honestly the type of game where I would just expect Blake Corum to totally run all over Colorado State. It, you know, I don't know how much we're gonna see a JJ McCarthy because obviously, you know, we're gonna get Cade McNamara McNamara to, to start off this game, but this just feels like a game that Blake Corum will just absolutely run all over Colorado State and probably get three touchdowns by himself. I don't hate that for a second. Yeah. You know what this game is? This is a game where you wake up pretty late. Like, if this game starts at 11, you wake up at, like, 12. Michigan's up, like, 28-3 to three in the second quarter, and, like, they just never stop. Yeah. I, I have Michigan covering the spread here. It's, like, what, 31 right now? Yeah. 30 and a half. Yeah, so 31 pretty yeah. much you're looking at. I, I think it'll keep moving, too. I think you could yeah. see it 33 and a half by the time it closes. I got it a little bit earlier, but I would still take the number no matter what. I, I think this is a game that's like 52 to 7. That's right at the under, though. That'd be bad for Matt. Uh, 59 to 7. Nah, better. Um, all right, I, I, there's no lineup for this game, South Dakota State, Iowa, but I feel like the consensus with us is that if it's – Within two scores, South Dakota State's the play. I know Liam had his. I whole- feel like I feel like Vegas is going to absolutely troll us with the line. They're probably going to give us something like nine and a half for Iowa. This just feels oh, like some. I- this just feels like some BS that they would do, and they're just waiting. Old. They're just waiting for. They're just waiting for people to to line up at Caesars and just get ready to place this bet. And then the second that it drops, they're going to be like, "Okay, never mind." That just feels like what this is. Yeah, I, however, I can also see – I don't know what it will come out at. I, I, I'm i expecting it to be like 11 and a half. That's what my assumption is. But I can see Iowa fans just like hammering Iowa and then it goes up for us. So I'm really intrigued to see what it comes out at. If it's anywhere over 10, like 11, I think that's – got to jump on it. But yeah. we don't know yet because it's Wednesday, Tuesday. I- I love South Dakota State. I think they're the second best team in the FCS. This is an Iowa team that they run. These two teams run the same defense. This could be the worst Iowa team in a really long time. And I'm not trolling when I say that. I got about – I still would not put it out that Iowa does not finish top three in the Big Ten West this year. I don't think they will. All right, moving down the slate. Nothing on the Maryland game, right, even though that's, that's too big for me for Maryland. Uh, Rutgers, Boston College, I might just watch just because it's going to be such a bad game. No play there. The UNC App State line is very intriguing to me. I don't think anybody has a play, <laughs> but because we're a gambling show, I feel like we should kind of talk about that. Um, you feel like you I, you know, you feel like you absolutely have to look up what App State's team total is going to be for that game, and you just got to bet the under based on what we saw on that UNC defense against the team where it felt like over half of Florida's, Florida A&M's you know, roster I mean, was suspended. App State is always – they always have a good offense. They Like, every year they put up numbers. Uh, and we saw this UNC defense be absolutely horrible. Like, I think the four of us maybe can move the ball against it. But, uh, yeah, I, that line is bizarre to me. Maybe look – what's the total right now? I might be looking at it over 57. for this. 57. They're projecting at 56, so they're projecting 28 and a half, 27. I could be an over, actually. That's not an official play as a lean, but I don't hate that. 
Yeah. I'll look up. App State's going to be the able to run the ball very well. This. App State is one of the best running back tandems in the country, Nate Noel and Cam Peoples. But if, if Chase Bryce can throw the ball, that UNC secondary was the definition of Charmin Soft. Yeah, it was uh, pretty bad. Well, moving on. I lost my spot. Damn, internet. It's not loading up the, the tolls for that game. I thought that game is even right now. I, uh, this is I not- have 56 and for the total and one, minus one and a half for the spread. So 20. Well, like, I want to know what Appalachian yeah, what State's too. total is, though. They'd be 27. Um, yeah. Oh, it's 27. Be, it's basically even. I just think you got to go over for that game. Yeah, I feel like I feel like that's one that you have. Like, if you can find like a twenty-seven and a half, or maybe a twenty-six and a half, even better for the same value. I feel like you kind of like have to take that App State over. It just feels like a given. I kind of like the UNC over. Drake May is really Drake good. really good. After yeah, that first good. quarter, he had a little bit of you know stuff. He was really good. He had one bad throw in the fourth quarter that should have been an easy touchdown, oh, but him throwing to Josh Downs. And UNC has a bunch of young running backs that are studs. So I would uh, lean, not official. UNC over is right. kind of nice. I'm officially adding back. UNC App State over 56 to my card. That's an official. I was, for me. I was worried about UNC's running back depth after they lost Ty Chandler because I loved Ty Chandler, but that, I, that, I liked what I saw out of them last, last week. Oh, O'Mary and Hampton was very good. All right, that's it for the noon games. The games at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock are all not great. Bowling Green, UCLA would be hilarious if Bowling Green pulled off another upset, but I don't think they will. Um, Georgia, Oregon, I'll watch it, but nothing in that game moves the needle for me, so I'm completely staying away from it. Nothing can – like, I've, ta- I've talked myself into two plays already on this show and what, like the first 30 minutes of it. Uh, not touching anything in that game. I don't know if you guys feel the same. Yeah, I agree. No, that's that, seventeen. That half is way too scary. Yeah, that's uh, that's nothing. Uh, Oklahoma, Utah, staying away from. Cincy, Arkansas is another game where I I think Arkansas could be a little bit overhyped coming in this year, but also since he lost a Everything. lot of money, they so literally that, like, essentially just dude, they're putting in a high school secondary. That's what they're doing this year. Yeah, so that's nothing for me. So. I think if you could find a prop for, like, KJ Jefferson, I don't know if there is one, but if you can, it's probably worth taking the over on if you can find something in terms of passing yards. Or I'll rushing yards, too, I, for him. The only thing I'll, I'll look on prize picks right now. I bet you they have something. Yeah, the only I thing I worry about that is Arkansas lost Traylon Burks, who was pretty much their only good wide receiver. Mm-hmm. So they're going to have to hope Jaden Hazelwood turns out to be something because he hasn't been anything at Oklahoma. You know, there's a history of wide receivers transferring out of Oklahoma and having great years. Yeah, I think it's going to be a great game. I just I don't know where to. Are you looking at the? If you look, while you're looking at prize picks, Andrew, I have a question for you. So I'm on Houston because okay, I'm all over the Cougars this year. I I have them to win the AAC. I have them to go over nine and a half wins. I they I think they could go twelve and zero legitimately. Why are they only? Is it a trap? I took the four for Houston because I think they'll win by two touchdowns or more. Why is it four? Is there a reason for that? Uh, I think it's a combination of different things. Um, it, I just think Vegas is low on Houston in general, based on everything. I think they're low on them in terms of AEC. I think they're low on terms of team totals. Uh, if I had to like absolutely like pinpoint where do I think that there are concerns, I would definitely say in the cornerbacks, they lose Marcus Jones, they lose Demarius Williams. Those are two massive losses. They lost Jeremy Singleton, their second best wide receiver from last season. They're kind of really banking on Jack. Man Jack, I forgot his first name, and Matthew Golden, who was a former TCU commit. He is now going to be a starting wide receiver for them. He's going to be their number two wide receiver to start the year. Um, I just think UH does have some inexperience at some places, but I expect, you know, I think the sec- uh, the front seven is going to be good enough to cover for the secondaries, youth, and I think Clayton Toon's a good enough quarterback to essentially get a good number two out of, out of Matthew Golden. I think he's that good. Um, the issue with Houston in terms of the win totals, though, is something that's actually kind of worth considering. Their toughest games last season in conference were at home last year. This year, it's on the road. They have to go to Memphis. They have to go to SMU. The SMU game scares the absolute living daylights out of me because we haven't won an SMU probably since I was in high school, to be honest with you. Um, 
And also a couple of switches. UTSA is probably their best non-power, their, their best non-conference game played in a while. Uh, last year they played against Texas Tech in Houston and they blew a 21 to 7 lead. This year they go to Lubbock instead of playing it in Houston. That actually, even though Tech may not be as good as, you know, as Houston is on paper, the fact that you switch that game from in town Houston to Lubbock does scare me, especially when they play each other against this year. But I still think that the front seven for UH is going to beat out what's going to be on Texas Tech's front line. Uh, I think Clayton Toon is a much better quarterback now than what he was at the season opener last year when he threw the four picks against Tech. Uh, help me out with the former Tech wide receiver's name, Emmanuel Enenage, or how, did, how, how do you say his last name? I, I forget. Whatever, but he was – but yeah, there you go. Uh, he absolutely lit him up for almost 200 yards last year, but he's not a Tech anymore. I still think Tyler shows that kind of quarterback – I think Vegas is low on Houston because I think they're still trying to live off of the Cincinnati pipe dream, but there is caution with U of H's schedule. A lot of people are going to be dissing U of H because they have a weak schedule. Last year's was weaker. And I do think that is where some concern draws. I absolutely believe that this team has all the talent in the world to go 12 and 0, but there are always those small little hints that I just think can like bite them and bend the backside. Yeah, um, but I think that four, uh, that number four is way too low for me. I think Clayton Dews going to shred up Texas San Antonio. So. Zachary Franklin, though, against an inexperienced UH defense uh, in, in the secondary, that is honestly something to look out for. He could have 120 yards in that game by himself. Yeah, but I mean, if you you could you could because I know like we're very high on group of five receivers here, and like there's a ton of incredible receivers. But I feel like last week Liam took Charlotte just because he loved those two receivers and then they got blown out. So I don't know. Like, so the Harry Franklin could have 150 yards and score three touchdowns, but Houston could still put up 50 points on Texas San Antonio. Yes. Andrew Ster. Uh, what I will say is UTSA did lose a decent amount. They lose Tariq Woolen, who was probably their top corner. They lose. I felt like Rashad Wisdom is the only like secondary player coming back for them from last season. Pretty much they're only like, very good one, and then they lose multiple offensive linemen. Lost in Sierra McCormick, yeah. I they lost a good I'm chunk also, of the defensive line, too. No, I, I'm puzzled at why this number is four and a half. I, I think they're giving UTSA a decent bonus because it is at the Alamo Dome, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm all over that. That's one of my that's my second favorite play. Of this the is what I would not be surprised happened. I would not be surprised if UH was up by 10 or 14. I'll probably go ahead and just say 10 or 13 and UTSA like comes up a couple bits from behind in the fourth quarter. It's what I think could happen. I think that is what Vegas is anticipating to happen, but uh, I do agree with you. I don't think there's almost any way that UH loses this game. I think they have too much experience than UTSA. Uh, I do have a play for this game, but that'll come back, but that'll, but that'll happen in a bit here. Yeah. Uh, UH has way too much talent than UTSA to, to for it to only be a four point, it should really only be nine and a half in my honest opinion. If you can, if you can go to a sports book where you can change the line yourself, probably do it. I probably would. I probably will. You know what? Screw it. I'm gonna go to my bookie right now and see where I, where I can like change this change this line myself. Where can, so where can I get they it? Do not have prize pick lines yet for. Well, they only have Oregon and Georgia for the Saturday game. But if you want to bet on the the Duke Temple quarterbacks Ooh, yeah I got, some, I got some props there for you if you're interested sure. all right um uh i'm gonna throw a quick play i think i'm the only one with uh interest in the san diego state arizona game uh i'm laying the i'll, I'll lay it up to a touchdown for the aztecs i think arizona's awful um san diego state's a very solid program they got a they got a lot of def- defensive guys coming back Braxton Burmeister from Virginia Tech is now their starting quarterback. And if he can manage the game, which I think he will, um, I think that San Diego State is going to ground and pound him to death and play solid defense and win this game by two scores. Um, so then the next game that we hey, have – I got a question for you. Yeah. If, if, it, if it was up to you, if you were standing the line for this UTSA-UH game, what would you put it as? I mean, I think uh, – I mean, I would I would have – you got to – like Andrew said, you got to respect them because they're the Alamo Dome UTSA. I think you got to give it – I would have it as a touchdown for Houston, but I think Houston's going to win by two. I think Houston's going to blow them out, honestly. I think they're not getting enough respect. 
If you want them at Houston minus six and a half, if you think that they're going to get that touchdown straight up, you can get it on my bookie for plus one hundred one. So essentially, just double your money. You if you think that they're going to beat them by two touchdowns, if you want to go for like the minus thirteen and a half, you can get it at plus one. Uh, you get a plus one ninety, so just under double your money. Hmm. All right, I'm going to look into that. So I might actually add that, but I want to stick with the four for now. Uh, moving down the slate, Ole Miss. Don't want to see BYU South Florida intrigues me a little bit, but like I don't know enough about. <laughs> Uh, South Florida. I just know they're not great. Uh, so that's not play for me. Yeah, that like that moves the needle. Yeah, none of these games really like in between the four o'clock and seven o'clock games move for me, except the FAU game, which I will bring up later because I fucking love one of the I'll play in that game. Uh, USC Rice, bleh. blah 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 blah. blah. Um, I, have, I have a lean in USC Rice. Uh, oh, do you? Let's go. I don't. Think, I don't think USC's defense is good enough to be getting five touchdowns. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I, Rice's I, offense is good enough to be respected by five touchdowns. 61 and a half. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Rice did score last year, but again, that's not my uh, expertise that school. Oh my God, it's going to be 96 degrees of that game. Maybe it unders the boys. Everyone's going to be dying of the exhaustion. Um, let's move to the primetime game, seven o'clock. I'm excited for this one. Utah, Florida. I think that's going to be a great game if anyone wants to kick that off. I think uh, I do have a play for that game. I think uh oh sorry, cut you off. No worries, go uh, go. So I actually found a play that I thought is a bit of a steal here. I, I took I know what you guys said about that you don't like first half uh spreads, but like I did take Utah minus one half, uh essentially a money line yeah, to, right. to, 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 to 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 straight up for the first half. I just think Utah's uh, defense is going to be way too good this year. I don't have really that much faith in Anthony Richardson. I think Anthony Richardson was a bit of a pipe dream when he first like came onto the scene last year, where people were really high. But then when as he got more playing time, it kind of like his hype kind of like died down a little bit. I don't really trust a first year head coach with Billy Napier winning this, winning his first game, even keeping it close against a team that almost beat Ohio State in the Rose Bowl last year. It is at the Swamp, but let's just be honest everyone's going to be almost dying of heat exhaustion in an early September game in Gainesville. I think Utah's got way too much talent. I think they're the better coach team right now. They just got to just have a lead at halftime. That's all you got to do. They just got to have a lead. And I think, and I think the value that I got on that was minus minus one ten. I think I probably should have bet two units on it, to be honest with you. Yeah, this is, this is my, this is my play of the week. This spread is bonkers. Like Utah <laughs> is a far better team than Florida. And they're getting three points. I yeah, understand. That, it's that's why I went for the first half is because it's way more secure than just getting the whole game because they just got to have a lead, you know, but then for some reason in that second half, it's like, Oh, we're just going to essentially add on two and a half points. Yeah. I like Utah. You loses only Britton Covey of their top producers on offense last year. They bring everything else back. They, they lose only Devin Lloyd off their defense last year from last year, pretty much. They bring back so much talent and this Florida team, the new head coach, uh, Anthony Richardson is like promising kind of, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think he, I don't think he has enough to take down a Utah defense. Like this, this line is crazy to me. This is like minus three is a steal minus one and a half in the first half is a steal. I'm all over Utah. Anything in this game, like the, the home field advantage is getting far too much lean here from Vegas. And it's, it, it's just a steal in my opinion. Yeah. Florida has been good in a while. It actually moved down. It's two and a half now I moved down. So people are apparently there's money on Florida for some reason. Uh, I agree with everything you just said. I'm, Utah is – I love Utah this year, but I'm, I'm I'm being a little bit of a baby. I'm babying out just like I did with the Penn State game because three is like a weird number for me where I get scared. Uh, so I'm just going Utah money line. I think it's at minus 145 right now. I'll probably – I'll lay it whatever it is um, as we get closer to game time. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I'm all over the Utes. And then uh, – kind of, uh, these games are really doing uh, – and then, Matt, you got playing Kentucky, Miami of Ohio. I'm 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 with the match in this game. You you lean match in a couple other games. I'm going with the match in this game. There's going to be we know for a fact at least Chris Rodriguez is unavailable in this game. Kentucky star running back. So we know at least he's out. And then Coach Stoops lean uh, hinted at at least a few other suspensions. He didn't specify who and he didn't specify reasons. We assume ineligibility from classes, coaching grades, whatever it may be. But there's going to be at least a few other players unavailable for this game. And I think that there's just I think the line's already moved a bit. It started at 20 and a half, 21. It's now around 16 and a half, 17 and a half. And I just think 
Kentucky is not going to be able to put up enough points to run away from a Miami, Ohio team that can score. If you know anything about them, action, you know, they can score. Mm-hmm. So I, I just think they're going to be able to keep up with them a little bit in scoring. It's going to be, this, base, this base, game is basically going to be on Will Levis's shoulders. He loses Wandale, loses Chris Rodriguez. It's going to be on Will Levis's shoulders. I don't believe in Will that much. So I just don't think that they're, they're going to be able to beat them by 17 points. So I like, I like Miami and Ohio plus 16 and a half plus 17 and a half or whatever you can find it out here. Will yeah. Levis is good for one or two Stevies a game. <laughs> yeah. Brett Gabbert's also a great quarterback for Miami of Ohio. And I think he, you could argue that he might outdo Will, Will Levis in this game, but yeah, I love I, I, any, any single time you bring up my action, I get excited. Um, so the next game, this is just a little, it's a lean for me. I know we keep bringing up first halves, uh, Bama first half minus 27. They're going to be up 40 points in the first half. I think, um, I don't know if they'll cover the full 42 because they'll, bench everybody but i think the 27 like you're gonna give me four touchdowns in the first half they might be up four touchdowns in the first quarter so i might go first quarter michael first half it's a lean it's not an official play yet i might tweet it out or uh, say something uh yeah so i'm gonna lean alabama first half just because it's alabama and utah state proved to me last week that they're gonna get absolutely stomped because uconn uh gave them a bit of a an issue all right and then this game I know you guys have plays. I'm personally staying away from it just because I, I hate both these teams with all my heart. Ohio State, Notre Dame, what you guys got? Give me Ohio State minus 17. I like Ohio State and Alabama are so clearly the best two best teams in the country. It's not often we see a number two versus a number five team, and the spread is 17. But that's just how much better they are. So the big question mark with the Buckeyes last year was their defense. It was the Achilles heel and pretty much all their losses, and they bring in the defensive guru, the bit like one of the bigger names on the market last year that is that was Jim Knowles. So if he can turn that around, uh, just give them a little bit of defense. I, I think they're going to cover this with you. CJ Stroud is obviously going to shred a shred a a Notre Dame defense that's going to be without the skeleton key they had that was Kyle Hamilton. And I think they're going to be looking for some replacement there. And I don't think they're going to be able to find it against Ohio state. Yeah. If I were to take this game, uh, I, I just, a 17 super big for me. Um, that's what I would lean. Uh, I don't think Notre Dame is going to be as good as they were last year. Uh, yeah. Ohio state is just an absolute wagon this year. They're going to, just stomp on teams and they're going to stomp on me when I watch them play Penn state uh, Beaver stadium in October, uh, moving on to our next game, Andrew, I believe you've a play in the SMU North Texas game. I do. And I made a big mistake when it came to this game. I thought it said SMU minus three and a half first half, which I thought was actually outrageous because I know that they're favored by over 20 in this game, but uh, that ended up being first quarter. And I thought, I'm just like, wait a minute, North Texas is nowhere near the talent that SMU has. I think SMU is going to go in this game. I think they're going to get a hot start on the first quarter. I think they're going to be up by 10. I think Tanner Mordecai, Rasheed Rice, you know, Kamar Wheaton, who I think is going to be among the more underrated running backs going into this season because he's a five-star guy from Alabama. I think that they're going to get up by at least 10 points minimum in the, in the first quarter. They're much better than UNT, even though the game's in, in Denton, Texas. I don't think, I don't think the, the main green are going to even keep up with, uh, with SMU, I think SMU is going to blow them out of the water just straight up as we even get in the first quarter. Yeah. Um, I know nothing about either of those teams, but I trust you. Uh, and I'll leave that as well. I SMU lost Danny Gray, and Danny Gray stole a lot of my money last year. <laughs> yeah, SMU, SMU can be fun at times. Uh, to, to be fair, out- this, is, this is a team that Rhett Lashley was the offensive coordinator was before he was at Miami. A lot of these, like, junior and senior players that are currently on the SMU offense, they're there because of Rhett Lashley. So he knows these guys probably better than what Sonny Dykes did when he was at SMU. And, yeah, so pretty much to round us out, I think I'm the only one with poise left. Um, I'm going with two overs, Kent State, Washington over, uh, just because I will tweet about Kent State. I will talk about Kent State. I love Kent State this year. They lost Dustin Crum. They brought in Colin Schley, who's kind of like the incumbent. He learned from Dustin Crum, and I think he's more athletic. Uh, the offense is going to be absolutely electric, and the defense is iffy. So just based on those two factors, I'm basing this just solely on Kent State. I think the number's at 59 and a half right now. I took it at 59 and a half. 
Uh, that's going to be a very exciting game for me to watch. I recommend everyone watch Kent State. They might they might get blown out. They might keep it close, but it's going to be a very fun game with a lot of points. And to round out my night, I'm I'm going back to the well, man. I'm, I'm taking the over in the Western Kentucky Hawaii game. I know I'm a disgusting person. I said I would never touch a Hawaii game ever. I'll never touch a Hawaii spread, but Western Kentucky is just going to. Doug Brumfield's going to light them up. It's like we watched this team let up 63 points against um, like 62 points against Vandy. Yeah, sorry. I lost my train of thought. Just how, That's how shocking it was that I couldn't believe Vanderbilt scored 63 points. Uh, Western Kentucky is going to put up – They all, Western Kentucky's defense also didn't do too hot against Austin PA, and Hawaii's really bad, but I think they'll put up points. The number's big. It's 67 and a half. I'll take it up to 69 and a half. I think that's going to be an absolute shootout, and it'll be we'll, – we'll talk next week when it probably doesn't hit. But I think it's going to be a shootout. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and that's it for our slate. So introducing a new segment, uh, we're going to call it the Parlay Corner. Any Anyone on the show has a parlay. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to start off with Andrew Struster and your parlay. And teaser, I believe. I do have one parlay and one teaser. I'll start off with the parlay. Uh, two plays on Friday night, which I'm, I don't know if I'm a fan of, but we're going to go with it. Western Michigan at Michigan State. I like the over 54 and a half. I'm asking, I'm asking Western Michigan to just score 10 points. Michigan State's not going to have a, a great defense. I think it'll be an improvement from last year, but Michigan State with Jaden Reed, Peyton Thorne, Jarek Broussard, the Colorado transfer, I think they'll be able to light up that defense. I expect an over in that game. I like TCU right now. The number is 13. I got it a little bit earlier, but I still love 13. Talked about it earlier. TCU is just far and away better than Colorado. I think Colorado is one of the worst teams in the country. TCU, could they bring out three quarterbacks? Yes. Could they three, bring out three toddlers and run a wildcat? They would probably still cover. <laughs> I think that low of Colorado. And I have Arkansas. Uh, it's been hovering around six or five and a half. I think right now it's at six. I still take it. Look, since he, since he lost so freaking much talent, they lose their quarterback, running back, WR1, offensive lineman, defensive lineman pretty much their entire secondary outside of Arquan Bush. Arkansas just has so much more talent than them. I think Sam Pittman is a very good coach. I think that more people think that they're so high on them that they're going to get, you know, beat by Cincinnati. I think that this is more of the case of a lot of people are high on Arkansas after last year that Arkansas is going to be like, okay, we know we have this hype around us. We need to now perform. And since he's going to be like, we just made the freaking playoff. Let's freaking go, man. And then they realized they lost more than half their roster. I like Arkansas to cover six, seven, eight. I would probably take it up to eight, especially since it's at Arkansas. And that is at plus yeah. 600. So six to one. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll probably start throwing some parlays and teasers at some point right now. I'm sticking to straight bets because usually when I, parlay myself I'm, I'm a sucker that's what i do with baseball and i hadn't hit a baseball parlay in a while so i quit uh andrew you have a i believe a nine team parlay y'all ever heard of a cannot lose nine leg parlay i got one here for you but let's put this like let's just put something out here okay these are all money lines these are all just straight up bets there's no points for it. Just, just bet the team to win. That's all it is. So this is how it is. It, it, I don't. I, this is not in chronological order. This is just the order that I have it. SMU, they're gonna beat North Texas. That is without a doubt in my mind. Kentucky, I'll take what Matt said about that. You know, Miami's probably gonna keep it closer, but I still think Kentucky's got way too much talent to lose to a Miami. Ohio State, unless Notre Dame pulls out an absolute screamer like they like Oklahoma did at the shoe. I don't think so. Ohio State's going to absolutely destroy this Notre Dame team. This is at a minus 800. This is among the biggest odds in, in, in this entire parlay. USC, not a soul in hell that they lose to Rice. I'm not even going to touch on that. Alabama, they're not going to lose to Utah State. Ole Miss, you know what? Troy, they, they, they beat LSU a couple of years ago. That's fine. Okay, that's a daydream now. Ole Miss, they still got too much talent to, to, to lose to Troy. Next up, Oklahoma. They're not going to lose to UTEP, all right? That's just not going to happen. It's at minus 20,000. It's just not going to happen. This is the only game that even somewhat concerns me, and that's because it is the smallest line. This is at minus 184. I talked a lot about it earlier. It's UHA UTSA. This is the smallest line. It's at minus 184. I still think Houston's, like I said, Houston's got way too much talent then UTSA, they just got to win. They don't even have to they, – they could only win by one. A win's still a win. And then lastly, 
Georgia just has to beat Oregon. You know, I think Georgia, they've had way too many strong recruiting classes over the last couple of years. I, I, you know, I like guys like Justin Flo and Noah Sewell a lot. I think Oregon is going to have a great defense, but Bo Nix against the Bulldogs defense. Like just think about that for one second, Bo Nix against this Georgia defense. This man is probably going to be in a body bag by halftime. And just to give you guys what the what it was, I believe it was at plus one ninety two, so literally just doubling the money on a whole bunch of can't lose games. I mean, I don't hate. You kind of need like a like a like a shocking loss to happen, which would be just. I mean, it'd be kind of funny. It would destroy. Fire, but you. it would be. But yeah, I mean, as a can't lose parlay, I mean, you, they literally can't lose. So, uh, yeah, that's the parlay corner for the week, and uh, we're gonna move on to our last segment of the day. We're gonna go with locks of the week. Oh, did you did you teaser? I have the teaser. I have the teaser. Oh, I thought you did. I thought you did. Okay, do teaser no. now. I apologize. Okay, so I've got cut that s- s- seven point teaser, teaser corner t- teaser something. Uh, okay, so it's a three team seven point teaser. Western Kentucky moves down to minus eight and a half. I I, I love their offense so freaking much. Yes, they weren't great against Austin P, but they have a wide receiver tandem of David Wood Davis and Malachi Corley, who were both phenomenal last week. I don't expect that to change. I would take them over Hawaii, who could rival Colorado for sucking. Uh, I, I have USC minus 27 and a half against Rice. I kind of lean with Andrew here. Rice is awful. And I think that the talent that USC has on offense is just way too overwhelming. You know, Caleb, Jordan, Mario, Travis, we can talk about them all day. I just don't even think Rice even has the offense to compete with a USC defense that we don't project to be very good, but it would still murder Rice. So that's minus 27 and a half. And I think Tennessee minus 26 and a half. I think that that spread is won by me by halftime. I think that this is a team where Hendon Hooker only has to play one half of football and they're up 42 to nothing against Ball State. I hate Ball State. I love Tennessee. I love their offense. Cedric Tillman, one of my favorite wide receivers in the entire country. I would love Tennessee minus 26 and a half. And those three legs add up to plus 193. I like it. Teasers always scare me, but that sounds like a good one. So that parlay corner is over. Teaser. Central is over. Last segment of the show. We're gonna do this every week. We're gonna everyone's gonna bring up a lock of the week. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll I'll kick us off. Um, this I saw this and I literally texted everybody I know that this was a line that you can take right now. FAU is a four point favorite against Ohio. At Ohio, uh, I I don't understand why that's the line. I don't know why Vegas is giving so much. This is a five star tsunami white whale play for me i'm absolutely hammering fau with the four points um we watched fau last week they kicked the dog poop out of charlotte who's a better team in ohio ohio in my mac preview i had winning three games they weren't good last year they, you could say they got worse this year their quarterback curtis work rourke excuse me he's he's been there for a while he won't get it done he's he's I, I don't know how this is at four. I'm shocked. I would. They're going to crush Ohio. That's my FAU minus four. Lock it in. Five-star white whale tsunami play. Has there been any news on Johnny Ford? Because he uh, didn't play against Charlotte for a late scratch due to personal reasons, but I haven't seen anything on social about him. Let's find While y'all look it up, I'll just go ahead and I'll just say it. Uh, Utah minus 0.5 first half against Florida. That's my absolute lock. If if, if, if that does not hit, I may not appear on another show because I'll be in that much in shame. Uh, no news on Johnny Ford, but, I mean, they crushed Charlotte without him. I think yeah. they'll crush Ohio without him, too. Yeah, they have that dude, McCammon, who just shoots out of a McCammon, so I like him. <laughs> nice. I, I'm with Andrew. I, I have Utah minus three the full game. I, I just think Utah's a far better team than Florida. I don't care where this game is played. Utah wins by a touchdown. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go back to the team that I hate, Colorado. You suck. I'm going to take TCU in the points. <laughs> I can't wait to fade Colorado and Colorado State all year. All right, that's our show. That's week one. Uh, episode three is in the books. Hopefully we win some money. Uh, follow us pretty much everywhere at T portal CFB. We got YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. You'll be seeing this content all over the place. Um, and shout out to Tally site for letting us put our picks on there. Uh, let's win some money. Have a great guys.